Doc Talk is brought to you by Multimin USA, manufacturers of Multimin 90, Sure Trace Mineral Supplementation by Timed Injection. Hi there, I'm Dr. Dan Thompson from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University. We're really glad you joined us this morning on Doc Talk as we're going to discuss how to trailer horses. Whether we're talking about the trailer itself or talking about horse health, Dr. Chris Blevins will be joining us. He's an equine veterinarian and assistant professor at Kansas State's College of Veterinary Medicine. Glad you joined us today. It's bound to be a great show. We've been using Multiman for about seven years. Uh, it's one of the most multi-use products that we have here on the farm. Bulls, cows, calves, weaning age cattle, just about everything on the place. If they go through the chute, they get a shot of it. The primary use that we started Multimin was on our, in our donor program, in our embryo transplant program. I'd recommend Multimin to any, any producer in the cattle business. Here at Deer Valley, every animal that goes through the chute gets a dose of Multimin. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. This segment is brought to you by Rotomix, manufactured in the USA and designed for feeding performance in the feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow-calf operations. Welcome to the show. Thank you. It's always good to have you here, Dr. Blevins. Folks, this is Dr. Chris Blevins, who is an assistant professor here at Kansas State's College of Veterinary Medicine, and he is part of our equine field services team, um, meaning he's going out and, and actually doing calls. Yes, and right. seeing horses. And, yep. uh, um, and, and we're going to talk about something that, that a lot of people do, and that's trailer horses. Whether they're, you know, we haul horses all over the place, different events, and uh, something that definitely needs to be talked about. Right, right. And, you know, there's a lot of different segments that uh, we can sure talk about when it comes to trailers. And I think probably the first part to talk about is actually the trailer itself. And, you know, when you... Uh, look at a trailer or, or people even owners as they buy a trailer what are they looking for and what kind of horses do they have all those things play in part of what they're going to get and I think size of the horse themselves is actually a part of that too whether you got a draft horse or a miniature horse kind of what kind of trailer you need for those different situations and number of horses that you're going to travel with and right. uh, I think that uh, as you put those things together they're all very important and uh, then if you buy a used trailer or a trailer that you maybe have had, what things to, to kind of watch for or look at when it, when it comes to that. So. Yeah. Well, let's just start out with some of the different types of trailers. I know that there's different ways to load uh, trailers, the way the horses ride, a uh, number of horses, you know, the, the two-horse trailer and, and different things to that. Are, are there different things to be aware of or look at based on the way the position the horses are going to be riding in the trailer. I think those are very good points. Yeah, there's uh, what you call a, the most typical horse trailer is a slant load trailer. So meaning that the horse kind of stands at a slant direction in the trailer. So the head is either going to be angled slightly off to the side of one side of the trailer while the hind end is kind of more distal part of the trailer, the hind end of the trailer. Uh, and, and they'll kind of be at an angle while riding. So they're not necessarily parallel with the, with the front of the trailer, they're at a slight angle. And that's the most common uh, trailer that most uh, horses have or horse owners have for their horses. And you can get some that are up to 11 horse slants and there's oh can be some, goodness. there can be some really large ones with a lot of horses in them. Uh, and I think that a main thing with those slant loads is owners understand making sure horses get along. Uh, because they're right next to each other, whether they kick. A lot of the times they have bite guards that are in between, so they don't necessarily can't bite each other, but their feet are exposed, and so some horses can kick each other while they're in the trailer. Mm -hmm. So making sure that they get along with their kind of trailer mates uh, is important in those slant loads. Well, uh, it's a good time for us to take a break, and, and when we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about specifically about things to look for in the trailer, whether it's flooring or sides and 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 loading and unloading and different things like that. Sounds good. Well, appreciate you being here. Thank you. And we appreciate you watching Doc Talk. We're going to take a break and we'll be back with Dr. Blevins in a minute. This segment was brought to you by Brute Cattle Equipment, makers of the Brute Stealth Hydraulic Chute. If the chute fits, swear by it. Visit our website for more information. You know just how costly BRD can be. But did you know that bacteria like Mannheimia and Pasteurella can cause BRD? That's why veterinarians and cattle raisers focus on preventing pasteurlosis 
with a quality vaccine like Pulmogard PHM1. It's ready to use, highly syringable, and provides comprehensive protection with a single dose. For pastorellosis protection that's truly the head of the class, ask your veterinarian about Pulmogard PHM1. This hog is Hanover hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion-dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. Hi there, I'm Dr. Dan Thompson from Doc Talk, and I'm excited to team up with Vance Publishing to honor some of the youngest and brightest professionals in agriculture today. And you can help us by nominating someone you may know. If you know somebody under the age of 40 that excels in animal production or food animal agriculture, food safety, transportation, or others, you can go to DocTalkTV.com and nominate someone for this award. Help us honor those who help us feed the world for generations to come, and I'll see you down the road. Beef producers need a practical choice when antibiotic therapy is required. More than ever, they are reaching for non-prescription Noramycin 300 LA from Norbrook. Specially formulated to produce sustained antibiotic blood levels up to four days in cattle, Noramycin 300 LA delivers economic, broad-spectrum disease management for pneumonia, shipping fever, pink eye, wound infections, and foot rot. See for yourself why Norbrook's Noramycin 300 LA is the practical choice for your herd. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. This segment is brought to you by Norbrook Laboratories, manufacturers of Normas in LA, Normectrum Plus, 1% and Poron, the practical choice for your herd. Folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Chris Blevins and we both work at the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University. Dr. Blevins is an equine veterinarian who is an assistant professor here in the equine section of the, of the equine uh, veterinary health services. And what we're talking about today is trailers. And, and we, we're talking about trailering horses. And, and let's start out with a, an inspection of the trailer and some of the things that you like people to take a look at. Yeah, I think, you know, when you inspect a trailer, whether it's new or used, there's, you know, typical things that are very important even for the health or safety of the horse themselves while they're in there. You know, not including the lights and hookups and everything that goes along with that safety of just going down the road. When you look at the horse trailer, the flooring is crucial for the horse because mm -hmm. that's uh, where they're standing the whole time during the trip and making sure the flooring doesn't give out. And so there's some floors that uh, might be rot if uh, it's wood, um, some even fiberglass if they get uh, kind of loose or even metal flooring, aluminum flooring on some of those horses, uh, maybe they could have holes or loose. And so making sure everything is nice and tight is very important because there's gonna be potentially 1,000, maybe even 2,000 pounds on some of those uh, boards, depends on the size of the horse. And you wanna make sure that nothing goes down through that, while, especially while going down the road. Absolutely. The uh, other thing is, uh, you know, the grip or the traction within a trailer. And, and some owner, horse owners, they don't think too much about it. And a lot of stock trailers, they can be fairly slick for a horse, especially if they have metal shoes on. Yep. And uh, those things can uh, cause the horse to do a lot of slipping around when the owner hits their brakes or accelerates. And so you want to make sure good traction. And, and a lot of the times, uh, some kind of a rubber mat on top of those type of floors negates a lot of that slipperiness, uh, especially if the horse has shoes on. Well, you hear some of the the horror stories of the boards rotting out and, and things like that. And, you know, even cattle, if you want to see an animal that's anxious, you know, take away, take away its, its footing yeah. and really increases the stress level of these animals. Yes, yeah, and that's, I mean, it's just crucial when they're going down the road that they have good footing. And, and yeah, horses, the same thing. They'll get really anxious if they aren't having the, the correct footing. And that might be why they don't load into trailers yeah, later on with a bad experience. I was going to say, they kind of <laughs> uh, remember those. They things. do. What about ventilation in trailers? Yeah, that's uh, another good point, you know, whenever you're looking at any trailer, whether buying or you have your own trailer, 
Uh, airflow is very important for these horses. You have to remember too, their ambient temperature is going to be similar to that of cattle and, and it's going to be that 70-60 uh, degree range and when it gets a little hot, horses will sweat and then when they start to sweat, condensation and then it starts to build up even more and that could even be an aspect of respiratory diseases. But uh, making sure airflow is important. There's a lot of up vents that are up above the horse, uh, side vents that are in there. So making sure they're open is very uh, important, even in the winter. Uh, making sure that those are open for ventilation. A lot of people try to trap them down and shut everything up to keep them warm, but that can cause problems. Well, we're going to take another break, and when we come back, we'll talk a little bit about how to get them in and get them out of those trailers. Um, great information, on, and, and especially on the, the ventilation in the floors. We're sure glad that you watched uh, Doc Talk this morning. We're going to be back with Dr. Blevins here in a minute. Thanks for joining us. This tip brought to you by Batrol 100 Enrofloxacin Injectable, now approved for use in controlling BRD in high-risk cattle. Batrol 100, right the first time, whether it's controlling BRD in high-risk cattle or treating BRD. Hi there, folks. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, and this week's On the Farm Tip, sponsored by Bear Animal Health, focuses on low-stress cattle handling of sick cattle. When a calf is identified with bovine respiratory disease in its home pen, we have to move it to the hospital. Those animals should not be run or stirred up as they're, they're sick with a respiratory disease. If they get to the hospital pen system and we're going to have to have a delay before we doctor them, be sure to give those animals shade, water, and a little bit of hay. Now, when we move those animals through our system, through the tub, it's important not to mix larger animals with smaller animals as those animals can become trampled or get pinned underneath the large animals and the outcome's not good. Low stress cattle handling, early disease identification, all of these things are important to assure animal health. This is your On the Farm tip from Bear Animal Health, and I'll see you down the road. With BRD, every second counts. And when you get new high-risk cattle, you've got a choice to make. You can either take your chances and wait and see what happens, or you can take charge of BRD. Right from the start, treat bacteria up front with Batra 100 Enrofloxacin Injectable, now approved by the FDA for BRD metaphylaxis and high-risk cattle. Ask your veterinarian about Batra 100 and make it your go-to drug to control BRD and high-risk cattle or for treatment of BRD. Batra 100, right the first time. Dr. Dan here. Whether I'm driving up and down the roads covering the state of Kansas, or I'm getting between Riley and Manhattan for my job, I'm driving a Ford truck. I'd like you to come out and visit my friends here at Dick Edwards Ford. They have a truck that'll suit your needs. Whether you're looking for power with a power stroke diesel, or if you're looking for fuel efficiency with the new EcoBoost engine, they got a truck that's just right for you. They're located two miles east of the Town Center Mall in Manhattan, Kansas, and they'll bend over backwards to help you. And I'll see you down the road. Hi, I'm Kevin Oxner, host of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen and Colorado Rancher. Join me each week as the National Cattlemen's Beef Association brings you the latest updates in industry information and market news. Plus, each week we provide important educational information and features on cattlemen from across the country just like you. And we can't forget our favorite cowboy poet, Paxter Black. Join me for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, debuting Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern right here on RFD TV. All the advice I'd give anybody on using Multiman 90 compared to any loose mineral or any other mineral that's out there on the market is Multiman 90, you'll see a result. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You're going to notice within about the first 7 to 14 days that their hair is going to start shining. You're going to notice that their noses will stay wetter. They're going to feel better. You'll notice a little glow to their eye. You can just tell. Their appetites are better. It's just it's a simple fact. It works. This segment is brought to you by Lalaman Animal Nutrition, dedicated to the development and production of natural and differential solutions for animal nutrition. Hi there and welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here at the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University. And I'm joined by veterinarian and equine practitioner, Dr. Chris Blevins, who is in charge of the equine field services here at Kansas State University's Veterinary Health Center. And Dr. Blevins, it's always good to have you here, and we're talking about trailers, horses, moving them, hauling them, but you gotta get them in and gotta get them out. That's right. And it seems to be, you know, as a former practitioner uh, with some horses, that, that seemed to be some of our issues, is you always had, well, this one, why don't you come out the farm, this one just won't load, or, 
Right. You know, I don't think I want to unload this one because it was so hard getting him on the trailer to begin with. So what are some things that we can do? You know, I think that uh, as a veterinarian, um, there can be some bad wrecks just getting in and out of a trailer for a horse. And I think, you know, like we had mentioned uh, earlier of the different segments as far as bad experiences and getting them in and out uh, sure play an important role. I think your veterinarian can get involved with helping with sedation and some other things if there's anxiety and, and that, sure, uh, you can ask for the veterinarian. Horse. For the horse, yeah, <laughs> for most parts of that. I guess you have to ask their own MB on the, on the other aspect. But, but uh, you know, I think there's a, the biggest wreck that I see with the owners loading horses is they maybe are pulling up to a docking area uh, and it's supposed to be so the horse really doesn't have to step up very far, but what they leave is a gap in between the dock and the trailer, and then there's a hole. And so that hole or slit is where, undoubtedly, the horse is going to step and potentially fracture their leg. And so understanding the surroundings of before you even start to load the, the horse into the trailer is very important. Whether you need to back up to a hill, if you're going to back up to the hill, make sure it's butted up against the hill um, right. so there's no gap in there. And so that's that's one area uh, when you're talking about just regular type type trailers and, and loading. And then they aren't jumping and, and, right. and jumping in and jumping out. Because that's one thing I found with cattle. If they jump in, they've pretty much figured out that they're going to have to jump out. Yes, yeah, and that, that could be something too. Some, some owners, will, they'll have them on asphalt and they're jumping out of those trailers onto asphalt and then that's a wreck too. They just slip and fall down. So just kind of thinking ahead before you load and unload is something we maybe just take for granted, but just understand that of the horse and what they have on their feet. So those, those shoes. And, and I, I keep going back to the cattle experience, but when we ship cattle, uh, it's estimated that half the stress of shipping is at the time of loading. Yep, yep. And so thinking about that Same when you're thing. hauling horses and, and teaching them that. Yep. Um, anything as far as, um, you know, once they're in the trailer, um, you know, we talked about the tie-ups. Yep. Yeah, I think that's uh, also, you know, very important. And, and the other thing about uh, some of those trailers, too, that we were mentioning is some of them are actually straight loads. So they actually, the horse has to load themselves into those trailers, and that can be a little anxious for those horses, too. Oh, because you they can't go in. They can't go, you can't go in with them, and so usually they have to load themselves in those, like, two-horse slants and things. So that can be a little bit uh, dangerous. Absolutely, absolutely. you got to have that way out. Right, go yes. Up in there. Yep. Well, we're gonna, when we come back, we'll talk more about the health of the horse yeah. and, and length of the haul and some of those things. Yeah. We appreciate you watching Doc Talk. This is a very important issue with, with owning horses is when we haul them. We're going to return with Dr. Blevins here after the break. We're glad you joined us. This segment is brought to you by Purple Wave Auction, the easiest, most straightforward way to sell used equipment. Purple Wave. Straight. Simple. Sold. This is Agriculture Today from Kansas State University. After six months of surveying consumers and beef industry scholars and leaders, K-State livestock economists have now completed their extensive study of the drivers of beef demand in the United States. K-State's Glenn Tonzer talks about the value of this information to beef producers and other stakeholders. A hope of mine would be that every person in the industry, all the way from seed stock producer, cow calf, all the way to a retailer, right, that's the last person to offer this product to a consumer or a restaurant owner for that matter, would recognize that they have a role in demand. There's components of quality control, again, whether you're a seed stock producer all the way to somebody putting that beef steak on a plate, that influences the demand that's experienced. This is K-State Research and Extension. Cow-calf, stalker, and feedlot producers know that effective parasite control improves overall herd performance and profitability. Norbrook offers a comprehensive, economical line of boron and injectable parasiticides for every livestock operation. Consult with your local animal health supplier to set up a program that protects your investment and brings larger cattle checks this fall. See for yourself why the Noromectin line from Norbrook is the practical choice for your herd. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine is a leader in food animal research and education. Our researchers are constantly expanding the knowledge of animal health and food safety. Through the Veterinary Health Center and the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Lab, we provide practical services for animal producers. Home of the Beef Cattle Institute, the college is committed to animal welfare training and research. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine, knowledge and service for the future of animal production. 
Got cattle? Rotomix manufactures a complete line of energy efficient rotary and vertical feed mixers for feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow calf operations. Our mixers are available with the patented Generation 2 Staggered Rotor, the industry standard for feeding wet rations that include wet distiller's grain. Made in the USA, Rotomix mixers are designed for feeding performance that American cattlemen and dairy producers have come to expect. Rotomix, proud to offer a better mix in less time using less fuel. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Chris Blevins who's an assistant professor and head of equine field services here at the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University. We're talking about horse health now and, and, and hauling horses. Right. And so what are some of the things that people need to generally watch for in the health of their horse? You know, I think, uh, you know, tying everything together, that's the most crucial part of when the horse is in the trailer. We talked about ventilation already that's very important. But the length of travel, you know, some uh, horse owners and trainers that have their horses in, the, in those trailers for long periods of time, even hours, and that could potentially be a problem for stress of the horse and maybe could cause respiratory disease. They usually recommend that a horse gets a break or is allowed to get out of the trailer every four to six hours. And so that allows them to stretch uh, get some fresh air and then get back in and, and go ahead and proceed with traveling. So those things are very important when it comes to length of travel uh, for the horse and potentially preventing respiratory disease uh, based on that aspect. What are some places that people are looking for, you know, when they're traveling and they have a horse and they're trying to look for a place to, you know, to unload? What are some places that I think that's a good point because, yeah, you can always say, well, you just need to stop. Well, where to stop can be a little bit troublesome, and sometimes the uh, truck stop isn't the best place to get your horse out and yeah. travel around when there's trucks and vehicles around. I usually tell people either rest stops, but you have to be careful some of those rest stops. Um, you know, just even a side road or a country road, pull over, you know, get them out, walk them up and down a, a non-traffic uh, area that's not as, as well-traveled as, as others, just to get them out in a safe area. What about water and, and feed in trans, trans, during transport? You know, water and feed, I think, is, is important. Uh, they should, a lot of people have hay in front of them the whole time, uh, in front of their heads, and I think that's good, as long as it doesn't get too dusty. And the water, usually when they're stopping, making sure they get enough water, usually during that stop or rest in four to six hours, is important for that aspect of the health of the horse and, and uh, just making sure that they have ac access to that and freshness of that water during that time. Kind of like what we would expect when we're traveling. That's right, yeah, we always <laughs> want something to drink after a while and something to eat and the same thing for a horse. Don't ne neglect them just because we're heading down the road, don't forget that they're back there and they need those, those same aspects. Any uh, closing thoughts on trailering horses? The, other, the only other thing that I always tell owners if they're going on long trips is the tying up of the horse or how they tie up that horse. You have to remember that a lot of times they need to take and allow that head to drop lower than the shoulders so they can evacuate dust and debris, whether they need to cough. So keeping them a little bit loose as far as tying them, obviously you don't want their foot to get caught in the lead rope, but allowing them to drop their head down while long trips are going to be very helpful in that aspect. Well, it's been a great show. Really appreciate you being here today. No problem. Thank you very much for Thanks. everything. Well, appreciate it. Folks, Dr. Chris Blevins, he's an assistant professor here at Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine. If you want to know more about what Chris and I do here at Kansas State University, you can find us on the web at www.vet.ksu.edu. Remember, we always recommend that you work with your local practitioner or local veterinarian. Thanks for joining us today on Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University, and I'll see you down the road. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. Doc Talk, produced in cooperation with Drovers Cattle Network and Bovine Veterinarian. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com.
Doc Talk was brought to you by Multimin USA, manufacturers of Multimin 90, Sure Trace Mineral Supplementation by Timed Injection, 